gonna uh, start by a little uh, presentation uh, with some key points. As Kero said, uh, I'm a material artist uh, from France. I started uh, 3D uh, three years ago now. And uh, for my professional experience, I already gave uh, online classes uh, about ma material creation and 3D in, in a more uh, general way. And I also did an article about my workflow for a uh, game artist. Uh, so in this section, I will give you some tips uh, on how to develop uh, the quality of your material. Uh, so first of all, it's the, the boring stuff, but you have to gather uh, references and if you can uh, take pictures. Uh, so these pictures are mine. Uh, I usually take a lot of pictures when I'm going uh, for a walk or doing sport uh, outside. Uh, so it's it will help you uh, when you are starting projects like for example, uh, these leaks uh, or this brick uh, wall is really interesting. So yeah, just take pictures if you uh, can. Uh, you can also make a quick project uh, to learn uh, really fast. Uh, so like for example, I came across these uh, pictures uh, on uh, texture.com, uh, which I find uh, really cool uh, and so I tried to reproduce it uh, in Substance Designer so that took me about uh, 30 minutes to one hour so it's really fast but yeah when you are doing fast project uh, I think that you are evolving uh, yeah really fast you you can see uh, new techniques uh, and yeah that that's a, a great way of uh, learning Uh, so you can also buy uh, some graph uh, from other people uh, that are way more experienced uh, than you are. Uh, like for example, you have uh, I, I think you run no uh, Daniel Tiger's uh, graph or tutorial are really great. Uh, but the reason I I prefer oh sorry I prefer using graph is because you can take your time. And really, uh, like, yeah, take the time to to understand why they made uh, that choice uh, in their graph. Uh, so you can also uh, sympathize with more experienced artists uh, to get good feedback. Um, like for myself, I got some good friends uh, that work uh, at uh, Ubisoft or yeah, big studio like that. So it's it's great to have feedback from them, as they are way more experienced uh, than I am. And so you can also do group work session to motivate yourself and motivate yeah, even the people uh, you are with. And learn from them, like for example, um, when I'm working, uh, usually there, are, there is a concept artist uh, with us and he he has like really great ideas uh, about lighting and stuff like that. Uh, so even if people are not from uh, directly your uh, in 3D or in your uh, specialty, uh, it's great to have, to have uh, some point of view. Uh, so now for the rendering. So I'm doing this part because I feel like most of the time people. Uh, forget a little bit about their rendering like there there are there are really great material uh that you can see in substance designer uh the graph is really great and people are yeah don't really take time to do uh their rendering so it's it's a little bit sad uh so the first point is to look at uh others, others work so I, uh, yeah, I did a little tour on uh, ArtStation, and so I grab uh, all these different renders. So you can see that 
you have different lighting, uh, different uh, poses, like you have even material directly on uh, meshes. So yeah, we really take your time. Uh, look at all those work is pretty inspiring and you can really see uh, what you like, what you don't like and take the time to uh, yeah, take reference from uh, them. So it's also great to showcase uh, the material you are doing in, in action. Uh, so for example, I made this material like uh, three months ago or something like that. Uh, it was a cuttlefish uh, material and so uh, for some classes I I did this uh, alien uh, skirt in, Z in uh, ZBrush and so yeah I think it's is great on him you can see all the, the little details and so yeah it's it's great for your presentation uh, and you can also, if you are uh, going to do a little scene, uh, it's really great to grab assets uh, to add the uh, storytelling and to create uh, little scenes uh, so you can uh, buy them or even get them for free if you are using a uh, bridge, for example. Uh, so yeah, that's something great to, to do. Uh, so f in this workshop, uh, we will go through uh, some graph uh, I did for my sci-fi scene uh, together uh, and after that I will show you uh, my Mammoscene tool bag uh, scene and I will uh, make a live demo of all my steps in Photoshop so if that's if it's great for you uh, let's go in uh, Substance Designer uh, so yeah, if you if you have uh, any question, feel free to ask them uh, in the in the chat, and I will do my best to uh, answer them. So yeah. So first of all, for my scene, so I played a lot of uh, to the Callisto protocol, uh, which is like really really great. Uh, the, the graphics are, are really cool in my in my opinion. Uh, and so I came uh, across this door at first, uh, which I really liked, uh, especially those uh, details you can see there. Uh, and also this one, so this is a more common door. Uh, you can saw them, uh, like I don't know, but it, it's, it's common. Uh, this is more like a hero door, uh, let's say. And so I really like uh, this door too. And so for the mood of my scene, uh, I wanted something like really calm. Uh, so I did a, a, a morgue. Uh, so all these, uh, with all those uh, abandoned stuff, uh, you can see on the floor, there is uh, a lot of blood. Uh, so yeah, that was my main uh, re reference. And I also took a reference from uh, props that you can see in the game. So yeah. So let's go in Substance Designer. Uh, so I will show you uh, four materials I did. Uh, they are usually quite the same in terms of workflow, but yeah, I think uh, there are great things to, to see uh, in them. So uh, let's dive in. Uh, so first of all, when you are doing your materials uh, and you are doing materials with uh, a lot of height, uh, like this one, I think it's great uh, to add an, an output node to have your A scale uh, set. Uh, and you don't have to do it uh, by hand each time you reopen your graph. So it's really easy to do, you just take a output node, you grab it, also take a value node, so you can uh, let that into a float or put it into an integer. You plug it, you go there, uh, make a plus and just search for the 8 uh, scale. And yeah, you can just uh, do a right click and uh, view uh, output in 3D node and you will have your 8 
uh, done so you can see if I go there and like uh, 2 for example you can see that it changed my, my 8 scale so it's a really cool thing to, to make uh, so yeah also for the when I start a material I usually use the uh, TT base setup uh, which is the setup of uh, Daniel Tiger uh, so you can have it for free uh, on his Gumroad and I will just show you uh, the main setup okay and so you are starting with this setup so you have uh, already your normal uh, height and ambience uh, connected together so it's a way simpler to use you just grab uh, your I don't know like uh, your shape and grab it okay yeah and you directly have all your map uh, done so that's that that's great and uh, yeah you have a, a very neutral uh, base color and, and roughness so yeah it's it's great okay so let's go back to my door just check um so usually when i'm doing materials uh, i try to uh, complete them in like a uh, maximum of one week uh, for this one i i think i took uh, five it took me five days and usually i try to have one day off uh, so you eyes uh, can have a rest and uh, you can have idea that come to your mind like for example uh, <laughs> maybe it's just me but when i take a, a shower or, or just I'm, I'm i'm resting on my bed i i got a, a lot of idea like oh, okay I'm, I'm i can maybe uh, doing that that way instead of uh it's enough of the way that i'm doing it uh, currently so it's always good to have a little bit of rest uh, when you are doing your materials. Uh, and another thing, uh, keep in mind that all those materials I are just made for my portfolio. As you can see, it's a little bit a mess uh, and it's not really optimized. So yeah, just keep in mind that it, the final usage is just for my portfolio. Um, okay, so I will try, um, show you my height first and after I will go through my base color, roughness and uh, metallic. Uh, so at first uh, I wanted to do uh, the basic uh, shape of my door, which is something similar to this. Um, so I grab a shape and just uh, started to remove part uh, to obtain uh, this shape. So that's my final door shape, as you can see there. Um, and I wanted to do some uh, parts, as you can see there, uh, as they are on my reference. So yeah, more something like that. So you can see you have block uh, inside your uh, door. So I took... Uh, so I took another shapes and like connecting them uh, together. Uh, that's my window. Uh, and that you can see that there, there are uh, these shapes. Uh, so the first tip uh, is that if you want to have uh, rounded edges, uh, just take your uh, shape, uh, pull it into a blur and uh, into a, a level uh, which uh, with values that are extremely uh, like uh, extremely uh, uh, close uh, oops okay yeah and so you have uh, your uh, rounded uh, edges so that's before and after after uh yeah so after i just uh, grab it um and so i wanted uh, to make my frame so i invert it at some point uh like i plug it there 
And so yeah, I uh, took it and I uh, subtract uh, it from my uh, door. And so I, I got this frame. And just bring it back there. Uh, so that's the main shape of my door. Okay, so after that I wanted to add a little bit uh, yeah, those big bolts uh, that you can see there. So I just grab a, a cylinder, blend them uh, all, to, all together and blend them with my uh, uh, frame. And uh, so after that I wanted to add uh, multiple layers uh, in my frame like you can see that I got my blue blue one and my uh, gray one there uh, so I plug that into a bevel and it will a curve and though the curve node is is really great uh, you can see you can do like really uh, cool stuff really fast so uh, I will maybe uh, show you there so you can take that can start uh, doing some stuff you can see it. it's really cool you can have a lot of details uh, so yeah and you have yeah a lot of detail really really fast like it took me uh, three seconds so yeah uh, so plug it into a level node and I grab uh, my curve uh, put it into a bevel to have these those shapes uh, on the side of my main frame. You can see there uh, all around, and yeah, just uh, blend it into a, an add uh, blend. So after that, I wanted to make uh, my the bolt for my uh, window. Uh, so. I just uh, do a mask uh, for my window, so I yeah, just uh, take my frame, uh, invert it, and uh, removing it from uh, from the invert uh, section, and just mask uh, to have only my window left. And I did the mask uh, with it, so I invert it. Uh, and I wanted my bolt uh, to be more at the center of it, so I just took a, a, a bevel and plug it into an histogram scan. So you can see that with that I can uh, have my position. So if I want to add more of that, I can. Uh, so, yeah. Okay, and so after that, I wanted to add uh, these those little uh, bolts you can see there, and for that, a really great node if you don't have it uh, is called uh, MV uh, Follow Shapes. It's from Marco Vitale. I think I uh, I pronounce his name well, um, and you can really see that uh, your bolts are following uh, the curve of the input. Uh, you have in it and it's really great like it took me really two minutes to configure it uh, you can change uh, your shapes like for example if I want to have square it's I can uh, you can also put uh, like uh, your uh, custom input in it so so yeah that's a really great node uh, so at first I subtract uh, them as you can see there and after I, I'm just redoing it uh, to uh, add them. And so you can see that it uh, did a great job and took me uh, like five minutes to make. So it was a, a cool, uh, cool things to do. Uh, so after that, uh, I just added uh, this little guy uh, to my main frame. Uh, so nothing really complicated there. Uh, just or, or again the, the tricks uh, with the blur and the and the, the level. 
Uh, and after I put that into a level node, and I uh, did a frame from uh, for my door, so just take uh, the mask of my door, uh, take a bevel uh, to have this this shape. Uh, took it uh, into a level and yeah there you have it uh, and yeah just mask uh, it uh, a little wider and so that you have really a, a sharp mask uh, and you can see there so I think it turned out pretty great uh, so once I got that I added uh, those little bolts uh, you can see there uh, so the same, I just use a shape that uh, I got into uh, some transform, blend it together. And for these bolts, I use uh, the same technique with the curve. So I uh, grab a bevel and plug them to a curve. And you can see that I got this really nice shape uh, quite fast. So you can make uh, them as you want. But yeah. Uh, so yeah, just integrate that uh, and so after i was happy with that i started to uh, make those grid grid line a uh, grid shape sorry so i just took a tie sampler so you can see that's my result uh, so i just take yeah, a disc and uh with the a size uh yeah i just uh, size them the way I, I wanted to have this grid and yeah just subscribe it uh, from my uh, base material I can see there and after that I don't know if you can see that great but it's not flat uh, in it and so for doing that I just uh, Copy paste uh, my tile sampler and change it uh, instead of a uh, circle. I got a uh, disc, sorry, I got a uh, Nalf Bell. And so I also. Okay. Oh, okay. Just. Okay, yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, I just subtract it to have those little details in it. So it's not fully flat. Uh, and I did the same thing for those little details between uh, my grid. So yeah. So that's really it uh, for that grid. Nothing really complicated. Um, so after that... Uh, uh, so yeah, I mask uh, this, uh, this block there. So for that, as I, as I was already having this uh, grid that uh, really take uh, your eyes I I wanted something uh, to calm your eyes like uh, not too much distracted and so something in these styles uh, something like that so that's just a simple shape that I got there so yeah I just uh, blend them together uh, subtract to have uh, those little uh, shape you can see there uh, same than before uh, bevel merge them together and yeah and it's yeah and that's the final uh, height for it okay so uh, that uh, is for my uh, surface uh, so my, for my surface uh, that you can see there it's not flat um, it's like uh, for the uh, peeling paint uh, so yeah nothing really uh, crazy there just uh, add it really 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 uh, low uh, if you go too far with it, it it's really messed up your uh, your shape but yeah keep it low uh, so after that uh, I wanted to add yeah so bolts uh, on those parts of my frame uh, because it 
yeah it was uh it was uh, lacking of some of some details there uh so yeah again the same the same technique um so a blend a blend a bevel and a curve so yeah when you are doing out your face in fact uh, you usually uh, use the same techniques uh, across your graph so once you understand them uh, it's really easy to do uh, out your face uh, so there I plug a transform because I thought that my door was uh, uh, too uh, high uh, for a, a character. And so from there I started to add uh, little those little details like for example there, you can see at the top. So yeah, always uh, the same things, you can see there. So shapes, uh, blur, uh, level, an edge detect, and yeah, transform and uh, mirror grayscale. And so you can see that you have uh, those nice looking details that are really not that complicated to do. But when you are combining uh, some of them together, like it really adds uh, life to your material really fast. Uh, so yeah. Uh, so I'm reading this comment. So what is your opinion on creating uh, shapes procedurally vs uh, vs uh, importing a uh, nice VJ uh, mask, for example? Um, I think that if you know that uh, you need to tweak your material uh, in the future, uh, it's better to do it uh, procedurally if that don't take you like uh, two hours to make but if you are yeah if you don't want to take this time you can just do it if you are uh, better uh, by doing this is in photoshop you can uh, totally do do this in photoshop and yeah in, it's it's a pretty good workflow uh, you gain a lot of time and yeah so i think at svg are, are great so yeah uh, so i hope this help uh, so yeah after i just took the shape to add uh, my little uh, uh, my little uh, lamp let's say oh yeah and once i was happy with that uh, i wanted to add something uh, another layer uh, on my door so as you can see on my reference there, I think that's really cool. I also got yeah this. Uh, it's a 3D reference from uh, the game, so it was pretty cool in my opinion. So I just did uh, the shape. Uh, um, so I took uh, two shape like that, uh, blend them together. If you if you know that you want uh, like your rounded uh, edges and you are like oh no uh, my shapes are not uh, pretty straight that nah, it's, it's not really great there uh, no worries because with uh, your blur after all it will just pretty much disappear as you can see there and so yeah. Uh, for this shape there, I just took it from uh, my uh, main frame. So yeah, just uh, grab it. Um, yeah, even if you have yeah like a really uh, shape, really uh, like small shape like that, it, it's okay. It's it's also uh, disappear after all. So yeah, and you can see that there. Oh, you don't have even. Uh, holes in it so, yeah um okay so after i did uh, the same workflow that i used for my main frame so i took a bevel a curve level it added another bevel uh, at the top and yeah just blend it and boom you have uh, your other layer and that's uh, the surface node uh, for this part 
Uh, so yeah. So like the other part for the uh, peeling paint. Okay. Uh, so after that, I added uh, those little details uh, on it. There, so you can see, looking like that. Uh, and yeah, from it, I pretty much just adding little details. Uh, so nothing crazy like those bolts there. Uh, those little details that you can see there. So that really a uh, basic shape nothing too complicated i think uh yeah that's so th that's the same for there i just made my shape uh place it and took a uh, edge detect and so there you have it so yeah uh the same for here as you can see Okay, great. Uh, and yeah, after all, it's just a uh, little detail, so you can see there. Uh, added dots in it. Uh, I think that, yeah, the triangle I got there. And yeah, so another level. And after that, yeah, so I added uh, those panels uh, on the side. So with just a gradient and uh, some tiling. And so you have those uh, little panel really easily, as you can see there. I think it's it great. Um, and yeah, so I uh, worked on the base of my door. So as you can see, oops, sorry, in my reference, there I wanted to have something similar uh, that support uh, the door. Uh, so this is what I made. Uh, nothing crazy, uh, just a uh, shape, a uh, transformation, uh, and yeah, just uh, removing this, and with a little bit of a gradient, as you can see there. Ah, uh, yeah, okay, so um, after that, I added uh, this little shape. Uh, after that, normally, yeah, the shape you can see there. Uh, those big boys on the side. So I did uh, uh, a pattern here because I was having uh, these mistakes uh, from before when I was doing uh, when I was uh, moving my doors. If I can show you, uh, it was there, so you can see. I move it too much and I was having these nasty uh, details at the top. So I just correct it by uh, plug it uh, something at the top of it. So let just, okay. Okay, and yeah, from it, it's just adding little details. Uh, and that's the end of my graph pretty much. Uh, so yeah, so maybe I, yeah, I can talk about it so you can see that these are the shape on this side uh, so yeah starting with the shape uh, subtract uh, so this uh, these two shapes uh, take it grab it boom uh, plug it in a transform node uh, in a mirror scale and just took the the same part and you have your uh, your details and so yeah that's all so there are there is my command uh, to open the door uh, so yeah same as before uh, yeah just moving it plug it in uh, so that uh, was my uh, shots I made so I would just uh, so this is fully unique right uh, changing the main door shape will break the other part uh, yeah if you change uh, the basic uh, silhouette uh, if you are if you just want to add 
uh, like if you want to have a thicker uh, frame, for example, it will not break uh, all the other parts. But yeah, that's not really procedural. Like uh, you can't make a generator with it. So yeah, it's just a unique uh, material uh, thing. And I think for graph like it, as uh, you are adding like those little details that you place uh, by end with a transformation node, it's really hard uh, if you want to change the frame to make something like uh, procedural. Uh, like for example, you if you are doing a generator, like a door generator, if you have all those little things, lot little details, uh, yeah, you have to make them follow uh, all your changings. So yeah, it's a little bit harder, but uh, yeah, you can do it. But yeah, I don't know if that uh, answer your question. I hope so. Um, so uh, at here. Uh, I started to add uh, some details, like for example, I wanted to have uh, bullet uh, holes in my door, that you can see there. Uh, and also a bullet uh, impact. Uh, so I did them in other graphs. Uh, I think that when you are working, like especially if in a like, big graph like that, it's really uh, good to have uh, to simplify your life by doing a little graph on this side. Sorry, just to you. So I, I think I really <laughs> maybe uh, speed up a little bit because I, uh, yeah, I just uh, see the, the time. Uh, but nothing. Uh, so I took a shape and I took a Gaussian uh, pattern, warped it a little bit. Uh, with a big pair of noise, what again with a smaller uh, pair of noise. Uh, and I added uh, this thing, like you can see there, as the metal was uh, really like uh, a transforming, I don't, uh, like bend. Yeah, I think it's a good word. And this shape also that you can see there, that is turning. And so just uh, my input, uh, it's it's totally useless, but yeah, okay. <laughs> I don't know why I, I, I laid them in, but yeah. Uh, so you can take your 8 from that. So yeah, it's there. And so you can see that I got my aim from that, and after I just uh, placed them uh, when I wanted to. And so yeah, you can see them there. Okay, so I made... The same thing uh, for so that's yeah a little bit more uh, of for the deformation so for the metal uh, bending and so after that I did my uh, Brooklyn glass uh, as you can see there so it's the same process I just did another uh, subgraph so let me just show you okay uh, so this method. Uh, that I use is from my good friend uh, Daniel uh, Giraud-Bichon, uh, which is a material artist for Ubisoft. Uh, so you take uh, directional scratches, plug them into a Cartesian to polar uh, node. So you don't want uh, to have all your uh, image to be taken by that, so you just take a shape as a mask and plug it, so you only have uh, that left. Plug it into a cloud to just break up uh, those lines. You don't want them to be like uh, straight. So that's the same for uh, the other details. So you can uh, take uh, directional uh, scratches. Uh, plug it into a Cartesian to polar uh, node. So you can see that they are coming from the middle to go uh, for the outside. Boom, take uh, your uh, mask, warp it with your cloud, and when you are uh, connecting the two together, uh, you can see that there you have it. 
just a little blur when with a slow blur and yeah a last slow blur uh, because when you are when you are uh, working on glass uh, like when glass is broken you have like uh, uh, many layers in glass and so that mimic uh, all the layer uh, so for now you can see that my uh, height is uh, inverted but in fact I I pretty much don't care because I, I got my, my height, I got my mask so when I import it in my main uh, material I just subtract it so let me find uh, I was uh, I was, I was, I was Oh, I get lost. Yeah, was after that. Okay, there. So you can see I got it. Just uh, plug them into a transformation node, and so you can barely see <laughs> see them. Uh, but yeah, there. There you can see. And I think the result is pretty great. So yeah. Uh. Yeah, tree trunk is a is a great idea. Yeah? Could could rock. And yeah, for spider web too, I think it's a it's a great idea. Uh, so yeah, just to, like for the bullets, uh, just something to uh, bend a little bit uh, the glass that for impact. Yeah, you can see it's a little bend uh, inside. And that's pretty much it. I just uh, added the uh, scratches at the end. And that's all for my uh, eight uh, for this eight eight map. So my normal is at uh, twenty five, uh, which is quite strong. But for our surface, I think it's it's great. Uh, it worked. Uh, yeah, something uh, when you are working uh, with your ambient occlusion, I think that uh, the main uh, when you import your ambient occlusion. So by default is like that uh, it's not in world unit uh, i think it's better to put it in world unit so you can see just there uh, like surface size i don't know yeah uh, 300 is great or 400 something like that and you can really uh, play with it so as we are for, uh, in the art surface it's it's okay if i got a uh, that much of ambient occlusion, but if you are working like don't know on tiles, for example, or, or organic shapes, uh, I think it's better to go for something, yeah, really uh, like uh, flat. But uh, yeah, uh, there is a route you need normal as well, or just uh, I will. Uh, for the normal, I don't use them that much. Uh, you can. But honestly, yeah, I don't use them that much. It's more like for ambient occlusion. I feel that it's uh, easier to have uh, your ambient occlusion correct uh, with this way. But uh, yeah. Okay, so I will speed up a little bit. Uh, so now for my base color. So what I usually do is that I take um, all my mask I, I'm masking all my uh, flat color uh, so you can see that I'm starting here uh, so I will just show you all the process uh, I yeah I, except for my uh, or the background and my uh, uh, window but yeah uh, yeah, I'm also adding a little bit of uh, condensation uh, on the whoop, on the edges. So just take uh, my uh, window mask, uh, invert it, and uh, put it into a, a, a bevel and invert it, blur it, so that you don't have those uh, sharp edges. And yeah, just uh, took a slow blur and mask it. And 
there you have your uh, condensation so here yeah, I'm adding my bolts, uh, all my little details, so I will speed up a little bit. So you can see that I added my frame, color, my bolt, uh, my uh, broken glass. Uh, so my, uh, yeah, my uh, text and a little uh, alphas. Uh, so yeah, another thing is that uh, you can use text, it's really easy to use. Uh, if you want to use like uh, fonts that are not uh, directly in Super Designer, you can. You just have to import uh, them. So you can see there that I have two uh, custom uh, fonts. And so yeah, just import them and after that you can choose them uh, directly in your text node. So yeah, very okay, okay. So adding all my little details there. Okay. So my frame. Uh, my leaks. So in fact, I wanted to make a uh, leak. So I did this uh, leak generator. Um, I think that it's not the best because after I, I'm going to show you, but I made uh, leaks from... Uh, my edge, uh, yeah, metal edge generator, I think. Uh, but yeah, that that was usually for my uh, shots, for my bullet. Uh, uh, yeah, my bullet uh, holes in my door. And so, there you can see that I have my, uh, which I call flat uh, base color. And uh, from this point, I will just add uh, all my details. So I will add a, a grunge. You can see there. Not too strong, but in overlay. There. I will add all my uh, scratches. So I will take a grunge and pull it in a non uniform direction warp. So with my uh, door. My head in the in the mask, put it into high pass. Uh, yeah, uh, mix it uh, with this grunge, another grunge, and finally uh, put it into a, a histogram scan, and so that you can see I got those like uh, leaks in my uh, uh, yeah uh, crevasses. Uh, yeah, that are going there. After that, I add in detail. So by plugging my uh, ambient occlusion to uh, histogram scan and invert it, so you can see that I just I just got my uh, yeah my uh, uh, edges, and so I it really add details into my normal uh, my uh, base color. Sorry. So after that, uh, all this part is for my uh, metal edge wear. So first of all, I'm adding, uh, so I'm taking my normal, put it to my curvature, and again taking my ambient occlusion, so plug it all in my uh, edge uh, damages, blur it, and pull it into an histogram scan. And so I can have this uh, nasty looking uh, like dirt uh, all around my my door. So made another one that not exactly uh, the same mask uh, with another color. So to merge them together, and after that, I just added uh, my metal edge wear. So you can see there, and you have a nice gradient between your metal. Uh, your metal edge wear and your uh, blurry uh, dirt. So yeah. And after that, I added my leak. So for the leak, I took my uh, edge damage, blur it, uh, put it into an histogram scan, invert it. Uh, so yeah, you got this there. And you can take a non-uniform blur scale uh, blur, uh, yeah, grayscale, sorry. 
and you plug your uh, histogram uh, at the top and your uh, inverts at the bottom and when you're uh, doing it correctly so you can uh, go full for the sample and your blade at one because otherwise it will just be messy but go blade at one and you are doing that at the bottom of course because otherwise it's a little bit weird uh, you can have your leaks and so after that I'm just uh, pull it in in a known uh, directional warp if you don't have this node because I don't really know where, where it comes from um, I'm not sure I think I got it from substance share but I I'm not sure if you are if you can have it uh, anymore uh, but yeah you can just uh, take a, a warp or directional warp is it will it will do uh, pretty much the same uh, and say yes Joe I just warp it with uh, a grunge just to have a little bit more detail and yeah boom you have your leaks so you can see the before and after so yeah that's the main thing of my base color I will say and yeah, after just adding uh, those little uh, details and yeah so that's pretty much all after all that i'm adding the color of uh, from my from the pattern i wanted uh, to have my emissive we can see there that's for my door uh, lock boom 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 Nothing really complicated, just a bunch of masks each time with an edge detect. And so, yeah. And so, we are at the end of my albedo. And so, each time I'm here, uh, I use uh, these tricks. So, it's from uh, Joshua Lynch. So, you take your gradient, you can plug it. Uh, with a, a noise and in your gradient you just pick all of these icons and so you have something like that so if you change like a plug it another grunge you know something like that you can see that you have that and you want to connect it in your material like just gently like you can see I'm I'm not uh, having a, a high value but it will add uh, all those little details and uh, unify your uh, base color so that's a really great thing to make um, and another great thing is that you can take uh, both curvature so curvature and uh, curvature smooth uh, blend them together with an overlay uh, blend uh, just connect it in the gradient map to have uh, that uh, output in uh, color, color mode, and plug it, and you can see that I have this those crazy detail just with that tricks. So yeah, oh, you can see that. After that, uh, just adding uh, this uh, high pass color to four. Uh, with also an overlay blend just to have a little bit details more and yeah a sharpen and when you are doing when you are finishing your base color uh, just uh, be sure to have a safe color at the end otherwise yeah, you can see it's really easy to have like way dark uh, value uh, yet to have a dark value in your uh, final output so be sure to get rid of that uh, with the uh, safe color and you can see that my uh, values are correct now and just plug it uh, metallic if you have one if you if your metallic is fully uh, black uh, you can just uh, go there and it will be okay uh, so yeah so I will just uh, let uh, pass really fast on my roughness uh, so yes yeah, so you can see I start with my windows boom boom my bolt uh, all my parts 
so that it's really not complicated. Uh, each time it's just a base color uh, mixed with the grunge and the blend. So yeah, my frame. My decals. And all my other layer, my scratches. My little details. Uh, so that's for my edges from metal uh, scratch and for the uh, deluxe. So yeah, and it's pretty much the same for my metallic. It's, it's way simple actually. You can see. Uh, and yeah, there yeah, you have it. So that's pretty much it for that graph. Uh, so yeah, I will just read your question. So do you determine the normal strain uh, by testing it in presentation and tweaking the flight? Uh, yeah, actually the normal uh, strain, I just, yeah, uh, make some tests uh, and whenever I'm satisfied with it, I just keep uh, it uh, like that. So yeah, just taste taste it and yeah uh, so I will just uh, show you my other material but yeah not uh, go into my graph because uh, it's already an hour in so I will try to uh, speed up a little bit um, so that's my uh, other wall oh, let me just uh, uh, the opacity okay so that's my other wall. So it's pretty much the same process. Uh, I wanted to show you something. Is this? Uh, oh no, it's in my other graph. Okay, it's in my floor. So it's pretty much the same process uh, for everything. I can see uh, my metal edgeware, my legs, uh, etc. And it's pretty much the same process. The main thing uh, that differ from the other graph is that I just take a little bit of more time on my uh, emissive part, uh, like for uh, the logo and things like that. But yeah, it's really not complicated. It's just yeah, a bunch of uh, of uh, shapes with a uh, bevel and a uh, curve node like before. So I'll pass to my floor just to show you all my material. So I will maybe yeah, same problem. Opacity, okay. And so I want to show you something here. So yeah, if you are having, if you are willing to use uh, the same uh, values for different nodes, like for example, uh, you have uh, two shapes. So let me do that. So you have uh, a first shape which is a square, and a second one which is a disc, for example. Okay. And you want the same value in, in the scale for both you can just go on each one of them into input values uh take that uh for to input it go on your other node take that also and you can go on to your scale so you made um and you, yeah you can just uh, like rename that scale oh scale okay uh, take it so that will be your value from now do the same here so yeah scale okay take it from there boom and now you can add an input value and connect it to both uh, shapes and you can see that now if I change it to like uh, 0 0.2 let's say boom you have two shapes that change uh, automatically. So if you have like, I don't know, uh, 10 shapes or, or uh, even other nodes that you want to change, yeah, it's just a, a simple trick to use. And you don't have to go uh, each time in uh, your nodes. Like for example, I use it for my, for the scale of my uh, tiles, uh, as I was uh, changing it uh, quite a lot, uh, when I was, was not sure about it. Uh, and yeah, so that's all for it. Um, and so, uh, a last thing. So at the end 
of your uh, of this workshop uh, i wanted to give you uh, a little bit uh, extra so each person uh, that uh, was present here uh, you will get uh, this graph for free so that's my uh, decal uh, graph so uh, Kero normally uh, have all your names so i will uh, send him the graph or i will send you uh, we'll talk about it a little bit uh, later but yeah, you will all have uh, this graph for free. Uh, except uh, for this uh, node, I can't uh, give it to you uh, with that. So I will just, you will just don't have the bolt uh, on the side. But yeah, for the rest, you will have all the graph. I clean it so it's not uh, that messy. And so yeah, you, you can just take your time and I hope that you will learn uh, some things with it. With it. So yeah. Uh, so that's pretty much it for my material. So I will pass a little bit faster on my Marmoset uh, render. So let me open it. Uh... Okay, so when you are doing uh, your Marmoset render, uh, I think that first of all, is it's great uh, to have proper meshes like for your tessellation. Uh, if you have uh, edge uh, a night with uh, a lot of tessellation or things like that, so you can subdivide them. Uh, so you can see that uh, for my ball, I got uh, two million uh, poly, so I can uh, increase that. But yeah, I don't want to be too much laggy. And I also have my cylinder, so I will show you how I uh, import my map. So just let call that. Door. I will just uh, let me grab my map. Just a moment. Environmental. Oh, normally it's okay. Okay. So I'll take my albedo. Uh, I will take my normal. So the first thing you want to make is that when you are importing your normal into Marmoset, if you don't uh, change the base uh, normal setting your normal is in uh, direct x so you want to flip uh, the y because uh, Marmoset toolbag is is using uh, OpenGL so otherwise your uh, map will be uh, not in the good uh, way so just maybe okay something like that so you can see better okay so now i'm gonna import my roughness so actually i i packed uh all my uh, map uh maybe i can show you how i made uh, uh the fast way after and boom, you have your material. That's pretty much it. So when you are importing your ambient occlusion, be careful. Uh, by default, the Earth, uh, sRGB color space is a tick for both of your uh, ambient occlusion and your cavity map. And when you are doing when you are doing interface, you don't see it that much. But when you are doing like uh, more organic material. You can see that it really adds a lot of uh, shadows in your material and it really uh, messes up uh, your render so be careful uh, to untick that uh, but yeah for for some reason you, it can be great but yeah okay i'll just import my eight like maybe 0.1 and boom i got my render so for the rest is not that much complicated so i just got my sky um when you are doing your sky uh on your uh, sphere uh, material that you want to have uh, like uh, a proper render i usually take uh, like uh, the tomoko studio so you have it with uh, Mamos, uh substance designer sorry and even when you are doing your material inside uh, Substance Designer, uh, try to grab it. So normally it's in the right environment. It's there, so you can just plug it in. And yeah, boom, you have it. 
Uh, have you tried the PBR rounder node? If so, uh, what are the difference for you and which do you prefer? Um, I tried it um, and it's great. Um, I think, yeah, it's a great node. I just personally prefer to use Marmoset Toolbag. Uh, I'm just, um, yeah, I just find that I'm better at it, but yeah, you can totally use it. Uh, but yeah, I think that you have more option in Marmoset Toolbag. And yeah, if you want to make a scene, for example, uh, <laughs> yeah, you don't, uh, you you will not do your scene inside the EP bureau uh, node, so it's a little bit better to have Marmoset Toolbag, but yeah, it depends on what you want. And so I just, uh, yeah, plug emissive in so emissive okay and boom you have it so maybe like i don't know yeah yeah you can test okay and so uh so yeah for my sky uh just uh, tomoko studio um and after that i got my main light and i got two uh edge lights so one of the top you can see there and one on the bottom and that's pretty much it uh, for my ball render. Um, so it's always great to have uh, like different cameras with a uh, field of view. So I got one camera with 20, I got one with 6, and one with uh, uh, 30, uh, 45, sorry. And you can really see that it's, yeah, it's just not the, the same render. So there's different uh, field of view. I think that's for uh, ball render uh, 6 is great in my opinion but it's for people for some people it's it's maybe too flat but yeah uh, do you add uh, AO to your base color for your matter I used my AO to do mask um, but as I am adding uh, my uh, curvature at the end it's a little bit the same thing usually so mm, the answer is uh, no but yeah I, I use it for creating mask so yes but no <laughs> uh, yeah uh, so I will show you my setting uh, for my camera so for the field of view I got six so that's my preference but you can go for like I think 20 is really great uh, 45 I think it's a, a setting is the default setting I think it's not that great you can see there yeah it's not that great but but 20 I think it's, it's great I just prefer to go for a flatter uh, render when I'm doing those kind of render and I oh, yeah can also maybe just show you uh, yeah just let me Duplicate it. Uh, texture, yeah. Tiling, one. Okay. And of course, I that. I want it to one. Oh, no, zero. Zero, okay. So there you can. Uh, so uh, that I also have my render for my cylinder that is ready. So yeah. Uh, so now for my camera. I will show you some option. So if you want uh, to be sure that you are, uh, your camera is, is uh, placing well, you can tick the save frame and you will just have it on the side. And if you go to uh, one, you can see that you just saw your uh, final render. Uh, for the focus, you can have, we can add a depth of field. Uh, I think that it's it's great to add uh, after that in Photoshop. So I don't use it that much for my bow render. I use it uh, just a, a little bit, but it's not uh, that strong. Uh, no flare and distortion also. Uh, no, I did it in Photoshop after. So yeah. Uh, so the main point here is the tone mapping. Uh, so from I think the default setting is linear. Yeah, 
yeah, that's it. And so usually I saw a lot of people and yeah, even uh, myself when I, I was starting, I go for this for the assess uh, tone mapping, uh, which is pretty great. But I think that uh, if you want to uh, if you want to go in Photoshop after all, after you made your render, it's great to go for uh, HEGL uh, because it's not that uh, you have like uh, less contrast, and so you can uh, yeah just uh, add your contrast after uh, in Photoshop. So for my exposure, I uh, I go for 1.4. Uh, my saturation 1.1. You can. Uh, yeah, just keep it to one one if you prefer. That's just uh, totally personal uh, preference for that. Sharpen, I tend to use a little bit of Sharpen for all my render. Uh, I think it's better. Just don't put it that too much uh, because I, I add uh, also uh, after in Photoshop uh, a Sharpen pass. I will show you just after. Uh, Bloom, I usually don't use it that much and just a little bit of grain, but that's all. As for my render setting, I'm using uh, ray tracing uh, with a bounce of six. Uh, so the viewport, yeah, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so the shadow, I'm using the ambient occlusion, ambient diffuse and specular, the local uh, refraction and diffuse. And so for my setting, uh, for my ball, as it's uh, just a square, I'm using uh, 4k uh, square into uh, PNG and for the sample I go uh, to uh, uh, to that I think that if you go a little down it doesn't make a lot of difference but yeah I think it's just better if you can go higher and for my denoise uh, strength I don't go to 1 uh, again, it's a personal preference, but I think that having a little bit of noise if in your final render is pretty great. So I, yeah, just uh, turn it to 0 0.7, and the, you want to have your uh, transparency on, as you don't want your uh, back, uh, your backdrop in your final render. If you want to have your gray uh, backdrop uh, as I have. Uh, as me, sorry, you just go uh, there in your sky and you turn your mode into color. I think like uh, base setting is like maybe blurry sky or something like that. Not sure, but yeah. And so uh, the main point here is that when you are happy with your your setup, <clears throat> you can keep it and use it for all your other uh, materials so that you don't have to redo it in each time. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it. So I will just uh, go in Photoshop now to show you my final uh, rendering uh, stage. So it's, it will uh, take me like 10 minutes if you are okay with that. Uh, so yeah. So uh, that is my final render that I extract from Marmoset tool Toolbag when I was doing my scene. Um, and that's my uh, ID map. So if you want to your ID map when you are doing your render, you just go to your uh, render uh, settings there, and you can uh, tick. Uh, you add new uh, render passes ideas, and you go to material ideas, and you can uh, you can tick it. So this will uh, make you uh, that render. You can see there. So it it will make you. Uh, a color for each uh, for each different uh, material you have in your scene. So, for example, if you want to add uh, a character like I am uh, doing, just make sure that your character uh, is not having the same material as other uh, thing in your scene. Uh, so let's do it. So I will just uh, at first grab my uh, ID uh, pass. And say yes. I'm sorry. My phot my Photoshop is in, is in French. I don't uh, know how to put it in English. I'm really sorry, but uh, yeah, no, normally it will be okay. 
So I took, uh, I take my uh, my character, uh, just create a new layer, uh, take gray, like that, okay. And to be sure that I am not having like you you see uh, things uh, left, I just go in it, uh, double click it, and I'm using a uh, contour with the same color and like something like yeah one or two uh, make the job so you can see if I yeah with without so yeah just to be sure that uh, all your character is in so once you have that you can delete your ID map and you can uh, duplicate your uh, base render go to filter uh, and to I pass and so usually I yeah just go for uh, four. So okay. And there you can go to incrustation. And you can see that it really sharp your image. Like if I go maybe like there, you can see the the, the difference. And after so that you can tweak the opacity. So like for our, our surface stuff, I usually go to yeah like uh, 70 maybe, something like that, can be great. So yeah, okay. Uh, so now I will just add a curve to have a little bit of contrast and uh, turn a little bit brightness, you can see. So I when I'm I'm doing my render, I just want something like more um, uh, how to say like uh, um, like really strong uh, oh, I forgot there was <laughs> it will just uh, uh, coming back uh, but yeah okay and I can add uh, brightness and contrast so maybe brighten this a little bit with a little bit of contrast, some of something like that, before and after. Boom. So that may be a little bit too much, as you can see there. So maybe go for... Yeah, five, maybe. Five and five. Great. Okay. Be quick. Okay. So there you have it. Uh, you can also add a little uh, gradient at the bottom, so I'm gonna yeah. uh, go for your black uh, color, go to gradient. Oh, wait. Oh, I want black, please. Okay, I will change manually, it's okay, fine. Okay, uh, and so for the uh, for this scale, I want like maybe hmm, something like uh, not sure like uh, yeah for this like that okay so I just gonna uh, pixelate the uh, mask and you can like make something like that just a little bit okay. Maybe a bit too much. Yeah, you have something like that. Okay, cool. Maybe. Yeah, like that. Okay. And so once I finished with that, uh, I will do my final steps. So first, uh, so I got three steps. So first, I. I'm adding a chromatic aber aberration, so for that I'm using a script uh, from uh, Romain Jouando, uh, which is a concept artist. Uh, and you can uh, execute your script. And so what it does for you is that it adds chromatic aberration, as you see there. So be careful to don't put it that much so usually I go for the first one uh, and yeah it's it's fine 
So yeah, it's great. So after I'm happy with that, I will go to filter and I add a diagram uh, blur. So maybe something like that and go to four. Okay. So you can see that before, after. So that your eyes is really uh, focusing on the center of your image. And to finish, add just a little bit of noise, like two, like that, yeah. And and there you have it. You can see the before after. So that's uh, just, yeah, okay. That's my uh, that's my render from uh, Marmoset Toolbag, and that's my final uh, image. And so yeah, if you have a logo, you can add it uh, if you want. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much, Antoine Dejean, for taking the time to share this amazing workshop and the accompanying resources for live participants for us at Beyond Extent. Make sure to check out their work in the description below. We also want to throw out a big thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. These workshops are only possible because of your support, so thank you so much. If you aren't a supporter yet, head on over to beyondaccent.com where you can find access to our community, environment art resources, and get access to these live Q&A sessions that always accompany these workshops. Stay creative and see you there.